What is up guys, it's EG and I hope you're ready for episode 2 of Distro Delves where, in this video, we're going to be putting under the microscope Fedora 31. Fedora is actually somewhat of an unusual choice for the series because Fedora is ostensibly a workstation distro and here on Distro Delves we look at operating systems from the perspective of a desktop user. But on the flip side, lots of people use Fedora on the desktop and even more people advocate Fedora to new-ish users for its leading edge innovation and reasonable stability. And also, Fedora uses much of the same technology that Ubuntu does, specifically the GNOME desktop environment. Fedora uses a homegrown installer called Anaconda, which vaguely reminds me of Calamares or Calamaris or however you pronounce that installer. Once disk partitioning is done, that's it. The installer just goes. The user account setup is done when you log in for the first time, or actually you don't even log in, you just boot up for the first time, which is actually becoming more common way of doing it nowadays. The post install setup is actually quite comprehensive and makes for a great welcome screen for new users. It covers all of the bases. Wi-Fi, some privacy settings, connecting to online accounts, setting up login information, including enterprise logins. This is really good. So now that we've installed Fedora and logged in and all that other stuff, let's talk about general usability. So just like Ubuntu, Fedora uses the GNOME desktop, albeit a newer version of it, but unlike Ubuntu, I wasn't prompted for updates like right after I logged in, but that's probably because I recorded this footage the same day Fedora 31 was released. Unfortunately, I found the NVIDIA drivers quite tedious to install. For starters, they're not available in GNOME software and there's no special driver installer tool like the one Ubuntu has. There are several extra and third-party repos you can enable, including a somewhat sketchy looking copper repo for PyCharm, but there's also a super handy repo specifically for installing NVIDIA drivers. But you can't install the drivers through GNOME software. So how do you install the driver? Well, from the terminal, of course. Fedora uses a package manager called DNF. I actually quite like DNF, however, it has one major issue. It's really slow. And I don't mean my network connection here. The tool itself is slow. So if you go to Google and look up how to install NVIDIA drivers on Fedora, you'll be confronted with a bunch of really bad information instructing you to download the driver from NVIDIA, disable the open source driver, modify Grub, and a bunch of other really boneheaded ideas that will screw up new users really bad. To install the NVIDIA driver on Fedora, you just need one DNF command. After enabling the repo, of course, Keeping in mind that Fedora is a workstation distro, I don't really think this is a bad thing, though an install method that uses some sort of UI is always preferred for a desktop user. So now that we have our NVIDIA drivers installed, let's talk about third-party software support. So much like how Ubuntu supports snaps out of the box, Fedora supports flat packs. However, Fedora does not install or otherwise support installing applications from Flathub by default, which is a little annoying. You can enable Flathub support in GNOME software by downloading the repo file from the Flathub website. However, after I installed it, I still couldn't access Flathub from GNOME software. I let the computer sit for like probably an hour because I thought maybe it had to like update some metadata or something, but nope. I had to reboot the system to get GNOME software to pick up the Flathub source, which is uh, bizarre. As far as snap support goes, you can install the snap daemon via DNF. However, snap support was gutted from GNOME software not too long ago, and it's only a CLI thing. Now much to my surprise, app images weren't supported like at all. Not only did Fedora not recognize the format, even when I set the app image to be executable, the file is opened in a text editor. And even when I ran it from the terminal, it complained about missing dependencies. I'm guessing that Fedora only wants to support flat packs by default and all other formats are effectively second class citizens. Now just like in the previous episode, I've got my core set of apps to install. Since we know flat packs work out of the box, we can install most of them through Flathub. You can install Steam as a flat pack, however it's sandboxed in a way that can't access external volumes, which is where my games are kept, so I need to enable another third party repo, the Steam repo. That's right, you need to enable a separate repo to install Steam. Besides Steam, I was able to install all of my favorite apps via Flatpak or just through DNF itself, which was nice. Now let's take a look at volumes and network discovery. Curiously, my external SSD was detected and mounted automatically without any fuss at all. Like, I plugged it in and then BAM, it was detected and mounted without any questions at all. 
My internal SSD, on the other hand, required a password and was not automatically mounted. I'm unsure why the internal drive is treated differently, but okay. On the file sharing side of things, I couldn't find an easy way to set up Samba. With Ubuntu, you can right click a folder and share it from Samba like right there. It's pretty cool. But on Fedora, there's none of that. And I could connect to my Windows machine via Samba, but the default work group is incorrect. It's set to Samba instead of work group, which is what Windows uses by default. And what's more, once I finally connected to Windows and browsed around, GVFS freaking crashed on me. So that's fun. Now other than Samba, there are several other ways to share files with other machines on the network. You can enable them via GNOME settings, and they actually worked seamlessly. So that was pretty cool. And what's even more cool than that is that Fedora discovered my printer totally on its own. In my opinion, Fedora sets the golden standard here. I've used Linux distros recently that either can't find my printer, or I have to install the driver myself or something like that. Fedora not only found it, but installed the driver without even asking. This is how it should be. I'm really impressed by this. And finally, we're on to my favorite part, and that is performance metrics. First, let's take a look at basic resource utilization with HTOP right after logging in. Fedora is quite a rambunctious distro using 1.3 gigabytes of RAM at idle and a stunning 155 tasks or processes running. For comparison, Ubuntu used just over 900 megabytes at idle and had only 63 tasks running after boot. Damn! The number of tasks and RAM used drops slightly after letting HTOP sit for a little while which indicate loads decrease after boot, which is obviously a good thing. Now because of how Fedora creates volumes and mounts, it's difficult to determine exactly how much space a clean install takes up, but I think that we can safely say that it's around 8GB or less than 10GB, which is pretty standard. And the boot to desktop time was roughly 14 seconds. And now let's take a look at the Geekbench 5 benchmarks. I'm especially excited about this because I wrote a super simple Meteor app to help me visualize the data for the series. It's currently very basic, but it will grow and evolve as the series goes on. Right now I'm only visualizing the single and multi-core performance. There's more to this benchmark than just these numbers, but as you can see, the base numbers are remarkably similar. On the multi-core side of things, Ubuntu beat Fedora by a negligible amount. You can check out the full detailed benchmark from links in the description. The Geekbench 5 benchmarks are relatively simple and currently only test the CPU performance, but that's why I like using games as a secondary benchmark indicator. Just like the last episode, the test rig is an AMD A-series processor with an NVIDIA GT730 from 2014. I'll show a chart at the end of this section to visualize the comparison between the two distros. GT5 is first on the list because it's a Windows game that runs pretty damn well on Linux with the right hardware and software. Unfortunately for Fedora though, GTA 5 ran quite poorly when compared to Ubuntu, coming in at just 23 frames a second on this benchmark. Remember that GTA 5 is in fact a Windows game running through Proton which uses Vulkan instead of OpenGL. Next up is Tomb Raider 2013. Unlike GTA 5, Tomb Raider is a native Linux port by Feral Interactive and uses OpenGL instead of Vulkan. And somewhat surprisingly, Tomb Raider benched in at just under 23 frames a second again, which is, once again, under when Ubuntu benched, which was about 30. CSGO is next on the list, and man, I had a hell of a time getting this game running. The first time I launched it, it totally locked up the display. You can't see it here, but I'm pressing keys to like close the window or drop into a TTY, but nothing is working. And then here I had HTOP running and you can see that CSGO and GNOME Shell have gone completely rogue with the CPU. I don't know what the hell is going on. But the third time was a charm and I finally managed to get the damn game running, got the benchmarks going. The results were most unimpressive, clocking in at a measly 43 frames a second compared to Ubuntu's 50 something. And at last, we've come to UniEngine Valley, which had its own set of issues. Remember that whole executable file issue I had with AppImage? Well, it's back again, and even when I set the file to executable, GNOME opens it in gedit. This is incredibly frustrating and wholly inexcusable for end users. I'd love to hear someone weigh in in the comments as to why the hell Fedora chooses to handle files like this. Once I finally got into the benchmark, I couldn't click any buttons. 
Spamming keys on the keyboard dropped me into a first person mode, which is cool, but it's not the benchmark. I finally managed to reach the benchmark by spamming the F9 key, and the frame rate was comparable to Ubuntu, coming in at 13 frames a second. So how does Fedora compare to Ubuntu? Well, from a desktop user's perspective, not good. Every single game I tested benched lower on Fedora than Ubuntu, and there were issues getting CSGO to run, not to mention input issues on Uni Engine Valley. Now I know there's going to be people that are unhappy with the results of this episode. And before smashing that dislike button, how about you tell us in the comments about how you feel about the results and what I could have done better. Remember that these episodes are written from the perspective of a desktop user, not a power user or developer. And what's more, you guys actually voted for Fedora in the poll I ran on YouTube. I do hope that you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to thumb the video up and share it on your favorite and relevant tech websites. These videos are actually kind of a lot of work to produce, and I'm still fine-tuning the script. I'm hoping to get out two more episodes before the end of the season, and I've got big plans for season two. If you want to weigh in on the next distro I test, I usually put out polls either on YouTube or Twitter, so be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow me over on Twitter. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.